Hello, welcome to this recording. My name is Marilyn Devonish and I'm from the founder of TransformationsTM.com and what I'm going to talk to you about today is a subject that comes up a lot. Oftentimes when people meet me, they will say, oh my God, you've got such amazing energy or where do you get your energy from? And these are people who are not even interested in energy. Energy isn't something that they particularly think about, they don't work in the energetic field, but they often just feel compelled to say that. And I know it's also one of the things that people will ask, people who, let's say, follow me on Facebook are almost saying, oh my God, how do you manage to do all of that stuff and still have boundless amounts of energy? So I thought I'd put this together because my starting point with my energy was that I was someone who was always tired. I would be sleeping 10 to 15 hours a day and I would still be tired. So the reason for this recording is to share with you some of the things I I kind of made them up, as I do with many of my client processes, but I just made up something to start changing my energy and the way that my energy flows. And in doing that, I went from someone who needed to sleep 10 to 15 hours a day just to feel okay, to somebody who can get by on two or three hours sleep, sometimes no sleep at all, and I feel absolutely fine. And I have to say, I'm not advocating that as a way of life. However, if you're in those times where you've got a tight schedule, you're going to have to have a really late night or a really early start. It's just sharing with you some of the techniques that you can use to help you more easily get through those times. So that's really what this recording is about. And the pe question people often ask is, is it really possible to feel totally energized after two or three hours sleep? I would say the answer is yes. And last night I probably had about three and a half hours sleep. So I got up about half past four this morning and I'm now recording this, record <laughs> this, this video. Um, I'm also going to talk about what you can, you know, what are some of the things that contribute to that constant sense of tiredness and this is things over and above having a medical condition because if you've got some kind of medical condition you definitely want to get that sorted out this is saying right with no medical factors what else might be contributing to that and then it's also about setting the background and the context and I'll share a little bit about me and where I started and what was going on and then transitioning into what did I do to actually change that stuff to get to where I am now, where I can, as I said, get by with no sleep at all or just two or three hours and be absolutely fine. And not just fine for one day. I could probably do a straight one of 25 or 30 days with not very much sleep at all. And people will still come up to me and say, oh my God, you've got such amazing energy. So it's sharing some of those things. A little bit about you. One of the things I'm always asking of people whenever I start a training or anything like that, a teleseminar, is what would you like to take away? So what would you like to take away from this recording based on what I've just shared? What issues or problems would you like to start clearing or resolving? Is it that you are constantly tired all the time? Is it that pretty much you're fine? However, there are those times where you're gonna to have to burn the candle at both ends and you just want some tips and techniques. So definitely have a think about that. And from, um, I guess, from back in my NLP days, we call it the, the rash, your reticular activating system. So it's about waking up the part of your brain that is predisposed to getting you what you want, because when you tell it what you're looking for, it will do what it can to find it. So in terms of thinking about what you want, as I'm sharing some of this information, when I'm talking about stuff that's particularly relevant to you, your mind and brain will wake up and say, OK, pay attention here. So a little bit about my energy journey and where I started. As I said, I was tired even after sleeping 10 to 15 hours a day. And it wasn't just a one off. It wasn't like, oh, I've had a late night. This went on for almost three years and I was chronically tired all of that time. So, you know, doing the thing where I'm nodding off at my desk I would fall asleep pretty much anywhere. I remember one of those defining moments of a couple of friends had asked me and my then partner out to dinner. And I said, oh, I'm not really sure I want to go. I'm really tired. And they said, no, 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 come on, it'll be fun. And I remember we're sitting over dinner. Um, the restaurant was serving up dessert. And I did that thing where I started falling asleep and I did the nodding dog. And I just woke up as I was about to do a nosedive into my trifle. Now, my partner wasn't surprised because obviously he lived with me and saw me all the time. 
the two people I was with were absolutely stunned. They're like, oh my God, are you all right? And I said, oh yeah, I just get a bit tired. And I think it was in that moment they realised I wasn't just doing the usual, oh, I've had a bit of a late night. This was chronic. And as I said, that went on for the best part of three years. It also came with what I would call brain fog. I was forgetful. I was irritable. There was a sense of confusion. And the best way I can describe it, it's like having a cotton wool head where you just can't think straight. And the tiredness then makes that even worse and it exacerbates it. And at that time, I was working at an investment bank in the city and I gave up my job. Because prior to that, I had been you know, quite energetic and you know, had been able to get things done. And what I wanted to do was go back and study to be an accountant. And I realised there was going to be absolutely no way that I could do that if I couldn't even sit at my desk for sort of eight, nine hours a day. So that's the point I had gotten to with regards to my energy. And I really thought that was it. I was going to have to live my entire life like that. And then I stumbled into a personal development training. And they were talking about the mind-body connection. They were talking about how your thoughts impact your feelings and your feelings impact your behaviour and all that sort of stuff. And I just remember sitting in the back and thinking, hmm, I wonder what would happen if dot, dot, dot. And I started, first of all, to think about what do I believe about my energy? And that was one of the first things I did in starting to re-energise myself. I then made up and created this little process for flowing my energy. At that time, I was learning about something called, um, in amongst all the other things, I was learning about something called HUNA. And HUNA has a process called har breathing. And I thought, oh, now that's interesting. I wonder what would happen if I put that into the mix. And then it was talking about, you know, reducing stress. And there was, um, with all the components I was learning, I put together this little piece that... I call an active meditation. So not one where you're nodding off, you're completely awake, you're completely alert, and it enhances your performance rather than kind of putting you into that tired state. And then also started to look at things like what you might call the higher self connection and getting the energy beyond myself. So the things I'm going to very quickly go over today are some of those things that I put together, which I used to re-energize myself. And also just to say, I went from being tired for three years over a seven day period, I went from that to the person who could easily be fine and function perfectly well on two or three hours sleep. And that just took seven days. And I've been like that ever since. And that was back in October 2000. It's now September 2013 at the point I'm recording this. So that's been constant for the last 13 years. So it's not a flash in the pan thing. It's not that, all right, well, you're able to do it for a couple of days or a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. I've been doing that now for 13 years and I fully intend to keep doing it because, um, I, you know, for me, energy is, is one of the kind of the life forces. And once you've got energy, so many other things become possible. So that's what we're going to very kind of briefly sort of go over today. Also, just to say, there is a saying from Hawaiian Huna which says, think not that all wisdom is in your school. What I am sharing with you here is what I created for myself. I have, of course, over those 13 years, used these processes with clients and they've had amazing results. However, this is just my school of thought. So if it resonates, by all means, play with it, take it on board. If it doesn't, leave it alone, do something else. There are tons of other things that you could be doing. So first thing then, energy beliefs. What do you believe about your energy? And I know that when I stopped to look at this, as I was thinking about, okay, if this mind-body connection is true, what do I believe about my energy? And one of the things I believed about my energy was like it was a battery. It would drain away. My energy would drain down. So I'd start with a certain amount of energy, and I was, at that point, never starting on a full battery. It was almost like almost half depleted already. So I realized I believed I was starting with, you know, a certain amount of energy and during the day it would drain away. It would drain away and I'd get to the end of the day and I'm spent. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm empty. I would also ask you, where do you believe your energy comes from? So where does your energy come from? And I realized that I believed that I had this little internal source, like a little battery pack, and so that was it. When that energy was gone, that was it. I had to go and lie down. I had to sleep. I had to get away from people. Following on from that, ask yourself who or what 
affects your energy. And what I mean by this, sometimes you, you hear people say things like, oh, God, so-and-so is such an energy vampire. Or, oh, I can't be around so-and-so, they really drain my energy. And I also was running that belief. So it got to the stage going, oh, no, I can't possibly see her. I can't talk to so-and-so. I haven't got the energy for it today. Because I believed that my energy was overly impacted by these external people and these external forces. When I changed what I believed about my energy, when I changed where I believed my energy came from, and when I changed my beliefs about who and what could impact and affect my energy, I went from the person who was always running on empty to what can best be described nowadays as a Duracell bunny. Because there are people, I mean, I had a lovely friend, she sent me an email, um, a Facebook message a couple of days ago saying, I thought I was busy. I thought I had some stamina. How the hell do you do what you're doing? I'm looking at all the things you do and it just makes me tired even thinking about it. And all of that came about in that seven day period where I started to seriously address what I believe. So that's the first thing to do if you want to start re-energizing is look at what you believe and ask yourself, is that a help or is that a hindrance to you? In terms of changing your thoughts and beliefs about energy, rather than seeing it as just depleting and draining away, I now see my energy as circulating. And if you're watching this on video as opposed to just listening to an audio, you can see the picture that I've put up on the screen, which is about those black lines and they're moving in all, di all directions. So I believe that my energy was then in circular flow. And rather than just having this little internal power source, it was literally flowing in all directions, both inside of me and outside of me. And it was circular. It was no longer depleting. And one of the things that gave me that idea is I just remember thinking, hang on a minute. We don't run out of energy. <clears throat> we don't run out of oxygen. There's always enough nighttime. There's always enough daytime. Hmm. It seems that what goes out on in our world, it's infinite energy. And I just started thinking, well, hang on a minute, if there's infinite energy, can I tap into some of that? And that's exactly what I started to do. So that's the first thing about changing your beliefs, how you see your energy, because that's then going to impact the way you interact with your energy and the way it shows up for you. The second piece comes from something called Hawaiian Huna. And I'm not going to say anything about Huna on this particular recording because I've already done a video. I've done a 15 minute video and also a 60 minute video explaining about Huna and how it works, etc, etc. So the piece I'm going to pull from Huna today is something called har breathing. And the Hawaiians believe that our life really circles around the energy, the breath and what they call mana. And they're absolutely right. Somebody who's alive has got breath. Somebody who isn't is no longer breathing. <laughs> and, and it was really that basic. It's like, OK, there is something magical, something impactful about the breath. In terms of the har breathing, what you're doing is you breathe in through the nose. You breathe out through the mouth. And as you're breathing out through the mouth, you make a har sound. So it sounds a bit like. And also in the way that you do the process, the out breath is double the in breath. So if you breathe in for one, breathe out for two, breathe in for two, breathe out for four, breathe in for three, breathe out for six, etc., etc. And depending on your lung capacity will then determine, you know, how you do the breaths. So we're just going to do hard, three hard breaths just so you get a sense of, of what it is and actually what it feels like. So just notice your state at the moment, where you're at in terms of what's happening in your body, what's happening with your energy. We're going to do a couple of hard breaths. We'll do three hard breaths. And then I would just want you to notice what impact that had on, has on the mind, what impact that has on the body. So breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, and out through the mouth. And just notice how you feel in this moment. 
and with the kahunas they would be down in the the caves and the ancient sites and they'd be car breathing for hours days sometimes weeks on end and it's a really kind of nice almost meditative state to be in and if you don't already do a regular breathing practice i would definitely say do the hard breathing sitting down because it can be quite heady and it can be um you know people get a bit lightheaded they feel a little bit disorientated at first and you might just start with 30 seconds of hard breathing then move that up to a minute minute and a half two or three minutes but if you can do this for two or three minutes it immediately starts to have an impact on the way the body feels it immediately starts also to move energy more efficiently around the body because when you're breathing in properly right down to the bottom of the lungs that's where the real energy exchange takes place which is the thing that is then going to help regenerate your cells and so it has a number of other benefits aside from just you know relaxing your breathing and, and it's really powerful stuff so that's the first thing and also, if you want any of uh, these recordings and processes, I've already done a 90-minute MP3, which is available from my website, www.transformationstm.com. And you can download an MP3 where I'm actually taking you through the processes that I'm sharing here today and several others so that you can just sit back and just relax and, and have me talk you through them. The next thing just to um, play around with is the active meditation so with the relaxing of the breathing you have just been doing bring that into this process what you're going to be doing is wherever you happen to be sitting I'm sitting at my desk at the moment but you may be somewhere else just find something to focus on which is just gently above eye level and just look at that for a few seconds just to get a point of focus and then bring your gaze down to a point where it's comfortable for you and then the next thing you're going to do is go into expanded awareness or what we also call peripheral vision. And in Hawaiian Huna, they call it hakalau. And that means rather than being in tunnel vision, where you're setting off the sympathetic nervous system, which is the body's natural fight or flight response. So the heart's going, the adrenaline's pumping. That's not particularly a relaxing place to be in. And that can also take a lot of physical energy. What you want to do is be in the other state, which is the setting off the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the body's natural um, relaxation response. And one of the quickest and easiest ways you can do that is relax the breathing and get into expanded awareness. So what that means is while you're looking straight ahead, you're going to have a point where you're just almost imagining and seeing what's going on around you on the periphery of your awareness and that automatically puts you into a relaxed state and it also means that you're not running um, almost kind of on empty inside in terms of being in that kind of heightened sort of oh my god fight or flight state also then what I'd encourage you to do is find a point just above and behind the head and about six inches behind the head and this comes from the stuff that I teach when I'm teaching photo reading and accelerated learning and what it does is it starts to focus the mind on what you're about to focus on. So rather than having your mind, again, having the motors running on tons of different things, which can then start contributing to draining little bits of energy here and there, you're just going to focus on what it is you're doing in this moment. And then just notice the breath and maintain that sense of expanded awareness. And again, if you just sit in that state for a couple of minutes, you will start to notice the way the body relaxes and it also is that thing of being what we call in a state of relaxed alertness. So even though you're relaxed, you're alert and you have a good amount of energy that you can then put into what it is you're about to do. So that's the active meditation. Another thing, I remember sitting in the back of the training room um, and made this, this little process up and then I played with it on the train on the way home that night, played with it at home and it really started to make a difference within a couple of days. And what I did is I imagined drawing energy up through my feet. Then I imagined having the energy rise up through my entire body. I imagined it flowing out the top of my head like a, a fountain or a waterfall and then had it cascading down the body, both internally and externally. And then as this energy kind of got back to the ground, I imagined it again going up through the feet, up through the body, out the top of the head. And I created this kind of circular flow of energy, if you like. And when I started to do that, I started that physically 
and emotionally and mentally I felt fitter, I felt sharper, I felt much more energised and gone was that sense of my battery draining down and in came that sense of always being able to circulate and flow my energy. And again, that recording, talking you through it a bit more slowly is on the MP3 recording, which you can you know, get free of charge from my website. And also just to say, with regards to your energy, I happen to believe that your character and what you think, what you believe and what you say about yourself will also contribute to your energy. And I know back then before I you know, stumbled into personal development and started just playing with stuff and thinking of what would happen if I did this, I was very quiet, very shy, lacking in confidence, really low self-esteem. And that was physically and emotionally draining. That used to sap my energy like nothing. I didn't realise it at the time, but it was when I started to look at, OK, what's going on in my life? What are these little things? It's almost like these little energy stealers that are operating in the background. That was my character profile right up until the age of 32. So all of my, you know, childhood, teenage, early 20s, early 30s, that was who I was. And no wonder when I got to a bump in the road where my health was compromised, all of the things that I'd been kind of trying to stuff down, it's like I couldn't hold it any longer. And that was also a massive, massive drain on my energy. You know, now things are completely different. Um, so, I, you know, I work as a, a master practitioner. I'm a trainer of NLP and a trainer of hypnosis and a trainer of timeline therapy. Also did all the life and executive coaching and that sort of stuff. And also a practitioner of a number of different techniques. You know, the HUNA, EFT, DNA Theta Healing, Emo Trance, Energetic NLP, Access Consciousness, the Archetypal Profiling, all of that sort of stuff. I also work, as I said, as a photo reading instructor. And I love the business side still because that's where it started for me. I did a business studies degree. Then I did a postgraduate marketing diploma, so uh, became a Prince2 project manager, worked for, gosh, past 10 years or so as a management consultant, and also write for a number of newspapers and magazines, and also kind of, you know, speak in public and run seminars and that sort of thing. And that's very different uh, to the me that was very quiet and very shy and terrified of public speaking because of all of these things that were, you know, in the background constantly draining my energy you know what I do now is this was put together by somebody on Facebook because he saw all these references um my clients and stuff posting about the transformations they've had after just talking to me and so one of the things that people call me is a transformation lady um I'm also very much about the mind transformation so anything to do with transforming mindset because quite frankly Regardless of what you're doing, whether you're share trading, whether you're an author or supposed to be writing your book, uh, whether you're a, a leader, a manager, whatever it is, if your mindset isn't right, all of the good ideas, thoughts and strategies in the world, you're going to be fighting against that. So the first book I co-authored was called Stories of Transformation. And that was with people like Anthony Robbins, Wayne Dyer, Brian Tracy, Paul Shealy, etc. As I said, I also write for a number of newspapers and magazines and that sort of thing. And with regards to this stuff, particularly the kind of the list of things that I do, it's not so you can go, oh, wow. The point I want to make here is that there are times I used to do all of that in one day. So I'd get up in the morning. I would be on site doing management consultancy work and that would either be designing and delivering a change management program. It might be de designing and delivering a leadership development training. It might be taking people through an executive coaching program. That would be the typical, you know, nine till 530, let's say. Then I would get on the train because I was in London. I live in Watford, get on the train, travel back to Watford. You know, while I'm on the train, that's a time where I'm often doing these little process and these techniques, playing with the energy, regenerating the energy. I would get home and I'd see a hypnotherapy client or a breakthrough client. That would probably be two or three hours minimum. Then once they were gone, I would um, more than likely be doing some kind of radio interview or teleseminar, which in with the technology we have today, it's more than possible now to do that stuff from home. So often somebody's interviewing me or I'm putting out some kind of, you know, informational content. Then what I would do, um, because I had a monthly column um, at one point and, and was writing all sorts of articles for all sorts of magazines, I would then sit down and write a magazine article and probably be going to bed at, you know, one, two o'clock in the morning. 
back up again at half past five to go back in and do a consultancy day. And that was my life for, you know, five or six years constantly. And actually, no, that's not even true. <laughs> Probably a uh, best part of 10 years when I think about how long I've been a management consultant. And that's not for you to go, oh, that's impressive. It's just to, to show you what is possible when you've got your energy handled, when you've got your energy sorted out. Um, because quite often it's not so much that um, people want to be in a position where they can be doing what I'm doing and just sleep two or three hours a night. They've just got a really busy time coming up and that's what they want to do. So the stuff we're talking about here today is how you can um, transform all of that. Essentially what I did in, in addition to making up these little processes for my energy, you know, I, I did a, what you call a breakthrough session. So it's like, okay, what the heck's going on here? What do we need to do to resolve and release these issues that are weighing me down and draining my energy? And quite frankly, lots of people can tell you exactly what the problem is for them, but they've still got the problem. So knowing what the problem is, is one thing. Actually doing something to release it, that's where the money is. And then installing new beliefs and behaviours to create and generate what you want to do. So not just thinking about, oh, what do I believe about my energy, la, 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 actually putting that stuff into practice. And as the meerkat would say, simples. The whole thing, you know, been refining that over the past 13 years now, you know, that is essentially what I'd call the 10 hour uh, transformation breakthrough process where you're kind of going through clearing out all of this stuff once and for all. There are a couple of articles on my on my website where you can see people writing about their experience of going through that. So I'm not going to say anything more about that now. The final thing that I want to just kind of talk about and highlight that might be contributing to your energy is what is known as the archetypal journey. Some people also might know it as the hero's journey. And one of the things I've noticed when I'm working with clients is that depending where they are on their journey will also determine what's happening with their energy a lot of the time. And just very briefly, there is a sense where you, it's called the call. You feel a sense of discomfort. It's almost like you're being called to do something else, um, but you're not living your purpose. You're not taking up the call, if you like. You're just kind of ignoring it and, and bimbling on doing what you're doing. That brings with it a sense of discomfort and that can be a really draining place to be. So I know from my perspective, even though when I graduated, I did a business studies degree, I had the postgraduate marketing diploma. I, at that stage, also had a teaching certificate. I also had um, a postgraduate sort of business and secretarial di diploma. I didn't have the confidence to go for a graduate job. So I've spent the first five years after graduation working as a secretary. And I hasten to add, there's nothing wrong with working as a secretary. However, I knew that I wanted to do more and I knew that I had the potential to do more. And that was energetically draining because I was constantly beating myself up, even though I didn't have the courage and the confidence to do anything about it. So that's the call. You then get to the threshold and this needs to use your energy in a different way. You need to marshal your resources. You need to pull together enough energy to be courageous, to not just look at the possibilities, but if you're going to step over the threshold, you've got to be prepared that there are going to be some challenges and you've got to start letting some stuff go. And again, for many people, they think about the, even the thought of changing. It's like it's too tiring. Oh, I can't be bothered. I just go back to where I am. If you get to that point, you then go into what we call the abyss. And the abyss is a sense of uncertainty because you don't really know what's going to happen. You just let go of some of the old stuff. If you make it through the abyss, because at this point, some people get this far on the journey and go, oh, my God, I don't like uncertainty. I'm going back to where I was. And then they move back into that place of, of discomfort. They move back into that place where they're holding on to things that then impacts their energy. But if you go beyond that, move into the transformation, that's where you start letting go and resolving your old issues. And with regards to resolving your old issues, people would describe it like a weight has been lifted off their shoulders. And when they're no longer carrying that weight, their energy is freed up almost like miraculously. The next piece after that is a revelation where what is going to be happening is revealed to you. That's really energizing because it's like, oh, my God. And for me, I, it was new career options for other people. It might be um, new relationship options. You might be focusing on your health, whatever it might be. But it's almost like, oh, my God, there's a freeness to that. And your energy really then starts shifting and moving. 
you then move into that place of a sense of satisfaction. And anyone who's ever done something that they are satisfied with, that they are proud of, you will know the burst of energy that comes from that. And then finally, it's the return. So in terms of the hero's journey, in terms of the archetypal journey, it's as though you are returning to the kingdom with the treasure. And that feels amazing energetically. And for me, I return to the kingdom with transformations, um, the company and, and the training thing that I set up. What It will be whatever it is for you. So wherever you happen to be on your archetypal journey, that will also inform and contribute to what you're experiencing with your energy and the things that you're able to do and the things that you're able to achieve. In terms of clearing stuff, there are a million and one things that you can do. You know, I personally, some of the ones, I mean, I've done loads of probably 15 or so different modalities to this point. And some of my favorites, you know, Hawaiian Huna always packs an amazing punch. And the cool thing about it is, you know, once I've got my client's permission, they don't need to do anything. I will do the stuff remotely. That's really cool for clearing and, and, and really kind of boosting your energy. NLP has been a, a staple of mine for many, many years. I love timeline therapy because that's about going back and clearing the old stuff from the past. So things like anger, sadness, fear, guilt, anxiety, because when you remove those things out of your mindset, your psyche and your energy field, it frees up a ton of energy. There's also access consciousness, which I absolutely love. That's a much more recent addition to my repertoire, shall we say. And it's a brilliant way of unlocking stock, stuck beliefs and freeing up all the energy and having much more flow. Hypnosis I love. And I know people have funny things about hypnosis. I'm like, look, you know what? <laughs> Realistically speaking, many people are being hypnotized every single day. The scary thing is they don't even know it's happening and it's normally with stuff they don't want. Um, you know, the media, the people you surround yourself with, what you say to yourself in your head, all of that is a form of, of kind of hypnosis. And the thing about using hypnosis in a therapeutic context is that you're actually using it to create what you want. And so that's really a brilliant way of, of even changing the way you think about things. And that might be a good starting point with changing what you believe about energy. So you're not just trying to say one thing in your mind and body again, that's rubbish, that's not true. Hypnosis is amazing for me able to cement stuff. Also things like DNA theta healing, energetic NLP, the list is endless. EFT, you know, whatever your modality is, find it and use it to start shifting out some of the things which are in the background running and draining your energy. In terms of some of the things that I love, as I said, Huna is one of them. Look up something called Ho'oponopono or the forgiveness process. As I said, I've already done a video on this, a 15 minute video and a, a 60 minute video. And the thing I love about Ho'oponopono is, oh my goodness, it's when you let go of the connections and all the baggage from the past, all of that stuff, even if you can't see it physically, energetically, mentally, spiritually, psychologically, it weighs you down. It saps your energy like you wouldn't believe. And when you cut those old ties and connections, the amount of energy that is released from that, that you can then start channeling into your life, incredible, second to none. There's also something called Access Bars, which I've been using more recently with clients. And that's basically touching these 32 points on the head and releasing old thoughts, ideas, beliefs, emotions. And again, when you release that stuff, it's no longer draining your energy. And all it relies on as the client is being able to receive. So you don't need to, I put the points up here just so people can see what they are. You don't need to know what they are. You don't need to understand the points. All you need to do is lie back and receive. And I'm the one who's kind of touching the points and releasing that. And if people really want to know about what it is, then yes, yeah, sure. You know, come along and do a bars workshop. I'll show you that too. However, just in terms of receiving mode, it's a really lovely way to just start having people just lie back and release some of the stuff that drains their energy. If anyone's come across access, you'll have probably also come across the crazy clearing statement, the right and wrong, good and bad, all nine pod poc, shorts boys and beyond and it's the, one of the craziest things i've heard and it works in just a couple of minutes people are noticing that they're releasing and freeing and letting go of stuff that they have carried around for an entire lifetime 
And the good thing is you do not need to understand the statement in order for it to work. And I'm not going to say too much about that here. I will probably at some point sit down and do a little um, access consciousness video as well in terms of what it is and it, some of the things that sit underneath that. But that's an amazing way to start shifting and changing things so you've got more energy flow. So in summary, really, just to how you can apply some of this stuff in your own life. Definitely, number one, look at and examine your energy beliefs because these are going to inform the instructions that you're giving to your mind and your body, both mentally and physically. Next is play with circulating the energy. So the little process that I talked you through for moving the energy, play with that, notice how you get on. Definitely, if you can, find a minute or two today to play with the hard breathing and those particular exercises. Also play with the active meditation because what that does, it gives you more energy, it gives you more focus in what you're about to do and it puts you in that state of, of what I call relaxed alertness. And then of course, clear out some old emotional baggage because that has such a huge impact on draining your energy internally and unconsciously without you even realizing it. So all of those are things that you can put into practice absolutely straight away right now. And in terms of any final questions, any queries about anything that we've touched on, you can of course find me on Facebook. It's forward slash Marilyn Devonish and that's M-A-R-I-L-Y-N and Devonish is D-E-V-O-N-I-S-H. I'm also on Twitter, again, forward slash Marilyn Devonish. So by all means, feel free to kind of post something on my page, um, send me a message. In terms of kind of contact information and to download the 90 minute MP3 where I'm taking you through and guiding you through all of the processes I've talked about here and some of the other things that I've, I've done, um, you can email me marilyn at transformationstm.com and as I just you say Marilyn, M-A-R-I-L-Y-N, transformationstm.com. That's all one word, trans, T-R-A-N-C-E-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N-S, T-M as in trademark. So Marilyn at transformationstm.com. That's also the name of the website. And just click on the resources tab and then you will find a way to access, gosh, loads of MP3s, all sorts of stuff is, is there, got the coaching workbook, uh, you know, all you need is a valid email address and then it will email you a password and you can go in and download whatever you like from that site. So that's really kind of what I wanted to share with you today in terms of some of the energy stuff and to answer some of those questions about what are you doing? How do you do it? Is it really possible? You can also give me a ring. What I would say is I'm on the move a lot. I often have a really busy back to back schedule. Um, and so having to stop and download voicemails and write messages down, not really my thing. So my preferred mode of contact is um, email. And the final thing I just want to say is thank you, thank you, thank you for your time, uh, for hanging out with me for this kind of 30 or so minutes. I really, really hope that you found it useful and that there are some things that you can take away and put into practice, please check back with my uh, YouTube channel. Keep in touch with the website as I'm always going to be uploading new stuff and new content. And I always say if people have got ideas about things you would like a little video on, by all means, just pop onto my Facebook page and let me know. So thank you. And I look forward to connecting with you soon.